Craig Gimm came back in 1987 for a conference on radiation health effects. Uh, this was following the Chernobyl accident that uh, educated many younger people about the whole generation of folks felt the same way in the United States of America. And so we grew up with, uh, I, I think, sort of a decade after LV out of the country where we could live a, a slower, uh, less frantic lifestyle. And we were also protesting the war in Vietnam at the same time. So in 1970, at a peak of the time when Americans were protesting an illegal war in a foreign land, uh, the Drug Control Substances Act was passed by the Nixon administration. This was clearly an effort to find a way to arrest those of us that were exercising our free speech rights and opposing the war in Vietnam and putting us in jail for doing something else that we also like to do, smoke grass. Well, when the Reagan administration came in in the 1980s, the uh, enforcement of these kinds of draconian laws uh, seemed to become a bigger priority of the government and more money was going into busting people for uh, smoking pot. Yesterday we heard some of the horrendous statistics about the number of people that have been jailed for using marijuana. I fell ill in 1987 which was, with an illness that was eventually labeled chronic fatigue immune deficiency syndrome. Um, and I began having migraine headaches every day. Sometimes I would have as many as four distinct migraine episodes a day. The only thing that kept me from shooting myself seemed to be smoking a joint and believing that at some time would come when I would feel better. The, uh, at, at the time, I had not done research into the medical use of marijuana, but over time, people began giving me information, and one day somebody brought me an article by Dr. Ethan Russo that explained how the brain chemicals were impacted by marijuana and uh, the THC in marijuana. And so suddenly I'm like, oh, well, now they're beginning to understand why this makes me feel better, why it enables me to cope with the pain of the uh, migraine headache. And then I began to read some of the other literature that talks about muscle spasms and realized that the fibromyalgia uh, portion of uh, in the United States, now they've given this a separate uh, disease title, but when I first fell ill, they were calling it either chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia, now they call them distinct illnesses, and they diagnosed me as having it, but it involves muscle spasms that wake you up at least every hour or so, and so one never gets the deep, normal sleep of a healthy human being. Every one of us here doesn't want to think about his or her own death, and we certainly don't want to think about uh, having to suffer from pain and helplessness before our death. Yet here is an ancient herbal remedy that can help with a wide variety of illnesses. We just heard how it can help with glaucoma. Um, I've now discussed a little bit about how it can help me with migraines. But when I began doing further research, I discovered that actually uh, cannabis and hemp were the ancient herbal remedies that in the, 19, uh, in the 1800s and the early 1900s, tincture of hemp was the main treatment for chronic migraine headaches or for any uh, continuous headache problems. And so I had discovered on my own the medication that was indeed making me feel the best of many other expensive pharmaceuticals that I tried uh, when they were prescribed by the neurologist from Johns Hopkins University. And uh, it seems to me incredible that human people who uh, by and large like to cooperate and like to uh, provide entertainment for us. We decided that one particular relaxant and one particular herbal remedy and said, oh yeah, this is a wonderful. If you are uh, so free thinking as to read how this could benefit you or how this could either help you relax more readily or it can help you with a serious illness, you cannot have this substance. <laughs> this is to me ridiculous. The law, the 1970 law is based upon a lie. In order to get rid of this law, we have to make sure that everyone knows it is based upon a lie. I know 
that it's going to be a long struggle. Some parts of the so-called land industry in the United States of America do allow the medical use of marijuana now, and other parts do not. The states that have changed their laws are more likely to be the western states where they have what's called a petition initiative. This means that the voters can directly seek to put an initiative about the medical use of marijuana on the ballot. In the state of Maryland, we don't have that option of just initiating our own vote. And so we must go to our state legislature and convince them to take action. The first bill to allow for the medical use of marijuana was introduced in the last uh, session of our legislature, but the legislature only meets for three months. It will be reintroduced in the next session, and we will try to continue to educate our legislators. The citizens of the state of Maryland, two-thirds, already support the medical use of marijuana, according to polls. And I think that the uh, rate is pretty similar throughout the United States. That means that a lot of the work that people have done in this room has taken hold. Many people in the United States understand that marijuana can be used as medicine. <coughs> can be used as a medicine that will be very useful for those that have a variety of disorders. And we could be learning a lot more about what marijuana would be well with, and sort of which strains of marijuana work best for which kinds of illnesses if we allow free and open research and communication about this substance the same way we do with far more dangerous and life-threatening substances that are not produced by the